Dave, you and I have been talking about the LSA community and sport aviation and its inability to make its case for, what, a decade or more? Mm -hmm, that's correct. Uh, I think part of the problem in that is the fact that uh, you have a lot of people that are inexperienced in aviation business. So they, they are in the business of aviation, but they're not in the business of business. And what happens, you'll get people out here that uh, they're aviators, they've got good equipment, they've got good skills, good abilities, but they don't use good business acumen. Therefore, they're making $100,000 a year when they could be making $500,000 or a million dollars a year, because it's really not hard to make $100,000 a year in aviation. Well, you've been walking the, the grounds today. You've spent a pretty solid day here at Sebring amidst the, the, the alternating sunshine and the rain. If you had to give a report card overall, not to anything specific, but to the LSA community right now on its ability to market and make its case to a public that may or may not want to buy an airplane right now, what grade do you give it? You know, I don't think I'd give it a grade. What I found out there was 50-50. I found 50% of the people just had, had uh, just an inability to sell, it seemed like, mm -hmm. and 50% of the people were really doing some skillful things. Okay. And those are the people that are going to succeed. Those are the people that are going to be in the top ranks of LSA. Let's talk about the inability to succeed right now. What are you seeing? What is, uh, what's happening out there? What are some of the scenarios that you looked at that just had you shaking your head? Well, today, for instance, I was watching some customers look at some uh, aircraft products. And uh, they were discussing it with the salesman. His cell phone went off. He immediately picked up his cell phone and just walked off. Didn't say, excuse me, goodbye, hold one or anything. Just turned around and walked off. I went to another booth and, uh, and I got down inside the airplane and looked and, and uh, they were sitting in their booth. Uh, they were looking at me. They didn't get out of the chairs. They didn't come say hello. Uh, when I went over to them and asked for a card or brochures, they said, oh, we're out of them already. Is the owner of the business here? No, he's not here today. And uh, how are they going to make money if they have that kind of uh, lack of skill in selling an aircraft? And how do you sell a $100,000 airplane? Right. with that kind of uh, uh, inability. And, and I realize some of the airplanes are less expensive than that. You've got some $30,000, $40,000 airplanes out here. But they need to be sold like it is a $100,000 airplane if they want to become a $100,000 or a multi-million dollar business. Of all the places I've been today, only one company asked me for my name. Now, how do you follow up? How do you send me things? How do you email me? How do you get in contact with me? How do you, how do, you uh, do sales follow-up if you don't even know who I am? Of all the companies I talked to today, only one asked me for my name. Freedom through performance. At Sirius, performance is not simply the measurement of a single design parameter. Rather, it's a total package. It's optimum balance of speed, efficiency, comfort, safety, ease of flight, and quality. We call it Cirrus Flying 2.0. Aren't you ready to feel the freedom? It was one of the things I've noticed, as a matter of fact, I was really uh, impressed last year when Piper entered the market, which of course they've now left. Mm -hmm. One of the things they did was they took full advantage of social networking in the net, and believe it or not, three days after Sebring last year, they sold their first airplane through PayPal through social networking. So by being experimental, by being accessible, by being out there, they found ways to reach people. And it's out there, everybody's seen it. I haven't seen a single manufacturer come up and go, hey, great idea, I need to do that. Because let's face it, there's no ideas out here too good to steal. Yeah, I'm watching people who are trying to sell a fifty to $100,000 airplane, and uh, they have a CD they want to give out that tells you everything you want to know about the airplane. $35, please, right. $25, please. Goodness gracious, that's advertising. Right. You don't charge for your advertising. You give it away and hope they'll give it away and, and so forth and so forth and so forth and, and have the social networking. Uh, but you got people here who are so intent on making the little dollars, they're missing the big dollars. Well, we talked about the bad side of things and the parts that disappointed uh, well, both of us, and I saw plenty of what you were talking about. Who's doing it right or what's being done right? And, and how do we make that even better? You know, one of the things I would recommend that people would do is maybe go down to the NASCAR races mm -hmm. and take a look at how those guys market. Oh. 
You'll see yeah. these tremendous vehicles there and all their product lined up and there's just, I mean, every you can't hardly turn around without somebody trying to sell you something. And they're just masterful marketers, like you say. And what they need to do, you know, if you want to be a millionaire, find a millionaire and find out how to do it. If you want to be a master marketer, find a master marketer, ask him how to do it. And get yourself uh, examples, not necessarily in aviation, but in the other industries and mimic them. And then you'll become a master marketer in the field of aviation. I was at one booth where I got a very positive response. Uh, the individual was really enthusiastic about his aircraft and uh, he was selling the sizzle. And before I walked away, I was thinking, man, I, I, got, I want one of those. Right. And I thought, well, now here's a, a brilliant individual. He's selling the sizzle, uh, not just the aircraft. And, and uh, you need to see more of that. I'm, I'm watching uh, uh, one of these companies here, the trike manufacturers here. He's got the Revo trike, and, and uh, he has been in the air all day long giving demonstration rides with that. And uh, he's selling the sizzle. Right. And uh, that's what needs to be done. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. You were telling me a story earlier about asking about uh, getting into the aircraft because let's face it, if you can't fit in it, what's the point? And you had one particular instance where somebody really did go the extra mile to make you feel comfortable with the airplane. Uh, that's right. Usually when I go over to ask if I can get into an airplane, they say, yeah, go ahead. And that's, that's the end of it. That's the end of our, our social contact. But this individual, the only airplane he had available to get into because he had his other aircraft mounted in the air, was way out on the ramp. And he says, well, sir, let me take you out to the ramp. So he took me all the way out to the ramp, gave me personalized attention all the way out and all the way back, and I got in and got to flip some switches, you know, and talk about it and tell him my interest in it, and he could feel me out and I could feel them out. And I really felt like I was appreciated as a prospective customer, and I know that company will go a long way. Let's take a moment here and, and, and go back to Aviation Marketing 101. Okay. What message do you want to send to all these people so that they're ready for Sebring 2012? I think the message they need to do is recognize that uh, the people that walk by their booth, whether they're wearing Levi's and a dirty shirt, may have the cash to buy that aircraft. Mm -hmm. And they need to look at that individual. And uh, if you read the book, uh, The Millionaire Next Door, you would find that they wear a cheap watch and drive a cheap car and everything. That's why they're millionaires. Well, if I dressed like that, which I do, and came up to their booth, I'd get ignored, which I am. But if I have the ability to buy one of these aircraft, mm -hmm. but nobody so far has, well, with a couple exceptions, has, has brought me to that sense of emotionalism where I want to part with that cash. Aviation is such an exotic field, it almost sells itself, mm -hmm. but you can't come here feeling that way. No. You've got to do your basic marketing, you've got to look professional, you've got to act professional, you've got to understand that you have to get into the heart of the individual, find out what he wants, meet that needs, then you'll make your sale. And that's not occurring. <laughs>